All right. Uh, Face Burial's third album, uh, At the Foothills of Deliration, is... It's a pretty big one. I think this is one of my favorite albums of the year, just straight up. You know, uh, it's hard to... It'll be hard to kind of crack into, like, the gist of exactly why, because there's a lot going on on this record that I like. Um, it's sort of... It's a lot of things that I like about death metal all happening at once, and all of them fit with both what's going on now in extreme metal in general, but also fit with classically what is sort of the best upper echelon of uh, progressive death metal, uh, just straight up old school death metal, um, uh, brutal death metal, uh, and e even a little bit of melody in there in here too. Not, not really the focus of this one. Uh, this is much more of a, a riff based attack. It is very much a riff record. Uh, it's, um, a lot of, they're still, fo so if you're familiar with Speciation, their previous record, that was sort of technique applied to a sort of groove heavy basis. You know, it's like they're, they were doing more with groove than basically any American band is, was doing at the time or has done since. Um, they're really, even though they are very influenced by classic hardcore and grindcore and all these things and, uh, and their other groups that they're involved in, this band doesn't sort of reach that sort of dunderheaded like goofing around mosh metal music uh the, in the same way at least um so and, and they, they subvert that by kind of kicking into what i consider an early suffocation style uh of, of drumming so how do they facilitate that well the production is really where they build that sort of force with the drums but the the bass guitar this time around is more prominent um it's more present i think that it's more is it like more stereoscopic i don't even know how to say it it's, it's um not so much the entire an entirely classic progressive death metal approach it isn't as if uh he's picked up a fretless bass and started to wobble like crazy you know it's not a di giorgio album but it um definitely hits in the same way uh you know like a stargazer record might in some ways early on like the 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 first one more so uh the scream that tore the sky uh that kind of record and um for me that's a good note because later on in the album they definitely do show more prominent influence from stargazer's discography in one of the later songs i think this record is just definitely packed with riffs front to back there's maybe one song uh, the second one on the album that sort of hits up on the groove just to make a good first impression, and then the rest of the album is all attack. There's uh, some prettier moments. There's some heavier moments. Um, it, it, like Again, it's, it's kind of hard to know where to go with the description of this. Um, I think there's a couple of moments that definitely remind me of the best of Anata. That's one of my favorite groups, personally, um, in, in death metal and progressive death metal. And... Uh, so where do they make it their own thing? I think that's the kind of the thing that a lot of people who are maybe a little bit more like harshly critical up front and questioning would say, well, I mean, they, it really does come down to the rhythm guitar work uh, and how it interacts with the bass uh, and how they, they've all, they've all generally stepped up what they do. And as a trio, I think they're able to sort of uh, work with and work around each other in more clever ways throughout this album. I think that the, they've not lost a sh an inch of the brutality in it while they, they do uh, become a little bit more of a progressive band, if I can say that. And uh, I, like, I'm, I'm just so impressed with how it all weaves together. But these are six to seven minute songs where if I went to sit down and kind of cut through even just one of them it would take me 20 minutes to get to the point and that really is is just that these are finer works they're 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 fleshing out their ideas more and uh the rhythms have become like really satisfyingly complex um and to to the point where we start to see the subgenre lines blurring uh in, in uh distinctive ways and i think that's important especially as we consider like i said the, the stargazer influence on some of it um not only that, I think the lyrics are pretty interesting. I think they're telling a story here. I sort of ripped on it at the start of the the, the review. There's definitely um, a lot to pull from that. And also, I mean, yeah, there's the Dan Seagrave cover on the front. Uh, if if there's a way to, like, uh, 
you know, hit the dog whistle right for the, the, the old school death metal throughout many generations. I don't know if dog whistle is the right word to, work, word to use, but uh, uh, it, it, it catches the eye of anyone who is interested in the real shit. And I think that this is the real shit. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I'd just be kind of repeating myself if I went on and on about it. Yeah, like I said, this is one of my favorite records of the year so far. Um, it's not a huge surprise that it, it is up there, but to me it's a little bit of a surprise that I like it as much as I do. I've had it for at least about two weeks, um, and I just haven't been able to stop listening to it. I'm kind of past the point of like hype and now leaning towards like just kind of, it's you know, it goes from like an analytical listening to pleasure listening to just being blown away still and just still enjoying it. And that's, uh, that's a good sign. The last record, uh, definitely hit the analytical phase and it took a while before it was like, uh, singing to me as it were. And so this one is just already ingratiating itself up to the, the high point in my favorites of the year for what it's worth. You know, uh, you get it. It's good. It is one of my highest recommendations of the year so far. And I think, um, uh, one of the ones to beat this year, even for my taste. So uh, there isn't a higher possible recommendation, right? So there you go. Check it out if you like it or don't. I don't. I don't care if you like it or not. Go tell the band if you like it or not. Uh, for me, just um, give it a listen, check it out, and get on with your life. <laughs>